Check this shit out. This game truly separates the rads from the squares. You know how when you're walking down the street and you pass a kid with a really wild colored mohawk? How do you react? Do you A. Passively take note because you've seen hundreds of similar outrageous haircuts and you're not impressed? Or do you B. Stop, drop jaw, hyuk to yourself, take a picture, and then remark to no one what a bunch of crazy looking folk there are around? Or do you C. Hit that guy up for mushrooms, take some, and then spend the rest of the day lying face down, staring into the grass and wondering what it's like to be an ant. If you chose option C, you're ready for 3D World Runner. By the way, that's what I've always called it, 3D World Runner. The official title is the 3D Battles of World Runner, which is way more awesome sounding, but it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. World Runner is often criticized for being a Space Harrier clone, and if that were true, there are way worse games to be a clone of. But in truth, the biggest similarity between them is the way the screen moves, and that's just silly. Seriously, that's way too much of an oversimplification. It's like you wouldn't call Ninja Gaiden a clone of Super Mario Bros. just because the character moves to the right when the screen scrolls. Or is it just that more games lack the mind-unlocked awesomeness to have you view your character from behind as the world races toward him? Honestly, it's really impressive for a game running on the NES. And even more impressive considering the game was released in 1987. Anyway, if you've never played it, here's the gist. Your guy is running forward, avoiding enemies, picking up power-ups, and jumping like he's on a tiny version of the moon. You can get weapons, but your best bet is just to avoid everything, and this is best done by mastering the jump. Like in Mario Brothers, you can control how high or how far your guy goes by how hard you tap the button, or by pressing back to lessen the distance of your jump. There are whole sections where you're leaping across chasms for a solid minute. Seriously, the abyss stares back at you from its endless black nothingness, and one false jump equals death. At the end of the level, the game goes from platformer to shooter, and you'll have to blast a dragon or two out of the sky to move on. Also, now your guy can fly. When you beat the dragon, your dude does the most awkward victory pose I have ever seen. Is he doing a jig while trying to high-five you over his shoulder? Did he lose a baby and now he's mimicking how he used to lovingly hold it? Maybe one of the dragons stole it and that's why World Runner is on this leaping, shooting, murdering spree? That's what I think. I love the subtle details in this game. Check out all these rad psychedelic sci-fi landscapes in the background. They look straight out of an Isaac Asimov book cover. Look how down in the corner, World Runner is giving you the devil horns. When you get a game over, the dragon on the respective level bounces around aggressively, just mocking your prone corpse. My absolute favorite is the pause screen. Just check out this zen player right here, just drinking it all in while he takes a quick breather. So chill. When we were kids, we thought this puff of air was him smoking, which is pretty funny in retrospect to think about, that this guy is just running and jumping so hard that he needs to sit down and take a smoke break. Aside from the basic shield and missile upgrades, you can also pick up extra lives, an invincibility thing, and a mushroom that poisons you to death. Dude, you're already tripping balls. Slow down before you lose your shit. These balloons take you to a bonus area that's pretty unnecessary. Basically, you can run around grabbing stars, but since they only give you points, it's really nothing too exciting. But this is one of the rare times when the music changes, and a brief reprieve from the main theme is a bigger deal than you think it would be. The graphics are super simple, but clean and bright, kind of similar in palette to the shooter game Stinger. The music is incredibly catchy in a way I can only compare to Bubble Bobble. Annoying and repetitive at first, but eventually you won't be able to live without its gentle, mind-numbing melody. Honestly, there is absolutely no game like 3D World Runner on the Nintendo Entertainment System. It is truly unique in both style and gameplay. Oh yeah, and it can be played in 3D. Spoiler alert! <laughs>